Okay, so welcome to this next video on skeletal muscle contraction. So, so far we've seen that uh, when a skeletal muscle is stimulated to contract, it leads to calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and uh, the calcium binds to troponin, changes the conformation of troponin, troponin moves tropomyosin, and basically tropomyosin no longer blocks the myosin head binding sites on the actin monomers. So now uh, the myosin heads of the myosin filaments can interact with the uh, myosin binding sites on the actin monomers, and what you can begin to get is a process known as cross-bridge cycling. Okay, so let me show you how what happens next. Okay, so let's say this is an actin monomer, a single actin monomer from the actin filaments. This is an actin monomer, okay? And now what we're going to see is how the myosin head is going to interact with it. So here at the moment is our myosin head. And the myosin head in, in its starting position, so here is its fibrous portion and here's the myosin head. The myosin head in its starting position has bound to it a molecule of ADP and a uh, molecule of inorganic phosphate. And now, just to put everything in perspective, what we have is we have our myosin filament coming along here. So here's our myosin filament, which will be attached to, to some uh, disc of protein over here. And here is our actin filament, so I'll continue our actin filament like this. And it will be attached to a Z disc over here. Right. So in effect, what we are looking at is a portion here. Here is our uh, disc of protein to which the myosin filaments are attached, and here's our Z disc to which the actin filaments are attached. So that's just what we've got there. All right. Now, once the tropo tropomyosin has moved and is no longer blo blocking the myosin binding sites on this actin monomer, what can happen is a process known as cross-bridge cycling. So the myosin head is going to bind to the actin monomer, and when it does so, it will drop its inorganic phosphate. So let's draw that as process one. So the first process that you get happening is here is your actin monomer. Now you have the myosin head bound to that actin monomer, and it's dropped its inorganic phosphate, so it only has the ADP molecule bound to it now. It no longer has that inorganic phosphate molecule bound to it. And um, here's the um, myosin filament there, and here's the actin filament there. Okay, so the inorganic phosphate has gone off. And basically this connection between the actin monomer and uh, the myosin head, this connection is known as a cross bridge. So this first step is known as cross bridge formation. Okay, now the next step is what is known as the power stroke. Basically, the myosin head is going to break off from the ADP, so it's going to drop the ADP, and when it does so, it's going to perform its, a, what's known as a power stroke, which is basically a change in conformation of uh, the myosin uh, head. And it's basically going to pull the myosin head down back towards its fibrous tail over here. So basically what happens is the myosin head undergoes a rapid, um, a marked change in conformation like this and pulls the um, actin monomer along with the rest of the actin filament in that direction so I've drawn this as though uh, the myosin tail has actually moved, but imagine the myosin tail has remained exactly where it is. This has moved back here, so what's happened is that the actin monomer with the actin filament has been pulled in that direction, basically. So, that is known as the power stroke. Okay, right, and uh, when the uh, myosin filament goes through the power stroke, it drops its ADP molecule. In fact, it drops it slightly before it does the power stroke. Okay, now what comes along is an ATP molecule. So ATP is going to bind to the myosin head, and it's going to cause the cross bridge to cleave, basically. So here's our ATP, and what's going to happen is that the ATP will bind to the myosin head, and it will cause this cross bridge to cleave. So let's show that here. So they're no longer bound to one another. And it doesn't cause the myosin head to shrink. I just had to shrink it in the picture um, so that it would fit in and not be connected to the actin um, monomer anymore. Okay, so ATP binds and that causes the cross bridge to cleave. So this is cross bridge cleaving. 
Crossbridge Cleaving. I'm sorry for the inconsistency of whether I joined Crossbridge together. I think they've probably got they've probably got a dash between them. Crossbridge Cleaving. Okay, right. Uh, now what happens is that the ATP is hydrolyzed to ADP and inorganic phosphate, and the myosin filament returns to its original conformation. But the actin monomer and the actin filament remain in this pulled over position. So they remain pulled over. And now what's going to happen is that the actin uh, filament is going to return to its original position. So you've now got the actin filament with the actin monomer pulled over this way, but the myosin head returns to its original position like so. And now it's hydrolyzed the ATP, so it goes back to having an ADP molecule bound to it and an inorganic phosphate bound to it, like so. Okay, so you're back to the beginning. You've got a myosin head in its good position, in its position ready to do the power stroke with ADP and inorganic phosphate bound to it. So what can now happen is that there is another actin monomer further up the actin filament and it can go through the entire process again and it will continue pulling this actin filament so if I draw the actin filament with its Z-disc it's going to continue pulling the actin filament in that direction basically okay so this process, this cycle is known as cross bridge cycling and I'm pretty confident that there is a dash between cross and bridge cross bridge cycling or it's also called the sliding filament mechanism of muscle contraction. Sliding filament mechanism of muscle contraction. Filament mechanism. Okay, right. So, now let's take a step back and look at the uh, result of this for the whole sarcomere. So let's draw our sarcomere again. So here is our Z-disc, and I'm now just going to draw it as a Z-line, so we're only seeing one side of it, basically. Here's the line where the, um, uh, the disc of protein where the myosin is attached, and here's our other Z-disc over here. So here are our actin filaments coming out like here, like so, and here are our actin filaments coming from this Z-disc, and then from this um, disc in the middle, You've got the myosin filaments coming out, like so. And basically, what's going to happen is that this cross-bridge cycling process will happen on both sides, basically. So on this side, the myosin heads are basically in the direction exactly as I've drawn. So I've drawn what is happening on this side. On this side, the myosin heads are basically oriented in this direction, and when they undergo the power stroke, they will collapse and they will, you know, they'll move in that direction and pull the actin filament that way. So I haven't drawn what will happen in that case. I've drawn what will happen on this side, and basically it's just the mirror image of what's happening here on the other side. Okay, so when this myosin head goes through a power stroke, it will go, it will collapse down that way. When this myosin head goes to, through the power stroke, it will move this way. So basically, this one will pull the this Z disc over here this way, and this one will pull this Z disc in this direction. So you therefore contract the sarcomere. What's going to happen is that. Um, the myosin head's going to climb up the actin filaments, and what's going to happen is you're going to bring these two Z discs closer together. So let me bring this up, like so. So here are the two Z discs with their actin filaments, like so. And we'll put the other one here. And now what's happened is the myosin, um, the myosin filaments have climbed up the actin filaments, like so and are now much higher up, and they've brought those two Z discs closer together. And if this happens in all the sarcomeres in the skeletal muscle cell, then what you're overall going to do is contract the entire uh, skeletal muscle fiber, uh, or the, the entire myofiber. So that is how you get contraction of uh, skeletal muscle cells.